In this video, I'm gonna show you Discover's top three credit cards, one for travel, one for flexible spending, and one for gas and restaurants. And then I'm gonna show you a better card to replace each one. Let's get into it. When you're trying to determine which credit card is best for you, you gotta look at how much you're gonna spend in which categories. You gotta look at the annual bonuses that that credit card gives you. And then what kind of sign-up bonus are you gonna get with the credit card? I have put together the ultimate spreadsheet that takes into account all three of these major components for all three of Discover's major credit cards. In the spreadsheet, there's three major sections. Let's take a look at this first section. This is where I compile all the different credit cards, their annual bonuses, how many points you get per dollar spent. The first credit card on here is the Discover Cashback credit card. It has zero annual fee, which is good. And the sign up bonus for only year one is a points match. What that means is however many points you spend in that first year, they're going to match all of them. This is a really good sign up bonus if you're going to spend a lot of money. Now in the points that you get from spending, you get one point for all purchases and then you get five points per dollar spent if you're spending in one of the flex categories. These categories change quarterly. Let's check out the cashback calendar and see which of these categories are going to be easy to hit and which ones are going to be difficult to hit. Remember, you have to spend up to $1,500 each quarter to get the full benefit. Any dollar you spend after $1,500, you're not getting five points per dollar spent. You're going back down to just one point per dollar spent. So in this first quarter, we've got grocery stores, drug stores, and select streaming services. I think this will be pretty easy to hit in three months. You can definitely spend $1,500 on groceries and drug stores combined, not even including the streaming services. In the second quarter, we got April through June, restaurants and wholesale clubs. Some people have a membership to these. Some people don't. Spending $1,500 on restaurants though in three months, I think that's pretty doable. So two of these quarters, I think I could hit personally. But the third quarter, July through September, you got to spend on gas stations and through your digital wallet. I personally don't spend that much on gas. I don't use a digital wallet, so I wouldn't be able to hit that quarter. The fourth quarter, October through December is Amazon and Target. Now I spend some money at Amazon and Target. I think I could probably hit that. The problem is, is if you're spending money at these stores, then you're probably not spending a lot of money at wholesale clubs. The second credit card we're gonna look at from Discover is their travel credit card. This one's very simple, very easy to calculate how many points you're gonna get. You get 1.5 miles in this case per dollar spent. There's no annual fee, so that's really easy. And finally, their sign up bonus in year one only. All the miles you get from your spending get matched. So if you spend a lot of money, you get a big sign up bonus. Discover's third credit card that we're gonna look at is the gas and restaurant card. This one also has no annual fee. Once again, that's the common theme with all Discover's cards. You get a sign up bonus just like the others, a points match. Where this card differs from the rest, however, is through the spending. You get one point for all purchases, but you get a bonus point. So now two points per dollar spent on gas stations and restaurants. So if you're spending a lot of money in these two categories, this card might get the edge for you. Now I want to look at the second category of this spreadsheet, which is the user profile section. This is where you kind of dial in what bonuses you're going to get, what kind of spending habits you have. That'll give you a better representation for the points that you get from each credit card. So if we look at the user profile, for me personally, I already told you, I think I could only hit three quarters of the spending. So I'm going to adjust that number to three and that'll affect how many points I get at the end of the day from the flex spending credit card. The second two categories I want to look at in the user profile section is for gas and restaurants. You put a one in that category. If you're going to spend money there, you put a zero if you're not. For instance, if you drive an electric vehicle, you're not going to spend any money at gas stations. So you'd put a zero in that category to make sure that your spending is not adding up points when you're not going to benefit from those points. The final box in the user profile section is the first year only. This is if you're wanting to analyze these cards for churning. Churning is where you open up a credit card you get the sign up year one bonuses and then you close it out. You really don't care about the points that you get year after year. You're really only worried about that first year. So I give you the option to put a zero or a one. The third section of my spreadsheet is the spending section. It shows different spending levels and a couple subcategories for different spending types within that spending level. For instance, the average American spends about $19,000 per year on their credit card. About 2000 is average for a single person for spending on gas and then 3,600 for spending on restaurants. And then of course the remaining is just those two categories subtracted from the $19,000. The final category of this spreadsheet is the results. The results section of the spreadsheet has two different representations. We've got numerical representation where you can just look across each row and see which credit card has the most points at that spending level. We've also got a graphical representation so you can see at a glance where is one card on top and where does another card 
would overtake them. So first, let's check out the graphical representation. Interestingly enough, the gas and restaurants card is on bottom all the way through at all spending levels. This is clearly the worst card. At the lower spending levels, the Flex Cashback credit card is on top and right around $35,000, the travel credit card actually takes over. Now, this would change if we change the user profile section. If you remember, we initially put three into the Flex Spending Quarters category. Let's pop up four in there and see how that changes the results. If you're able to hit the spending goals for all four quarters, I wouldn't be able to do this, but if you are, then the Flex credit card would actually be on top all the way up until $48,000 per year, and then only at $58,000 per year with the travel credit card pass it up. Once again, the gas and restaurants credit card is on bottom. With these spending amounts, you can see it's really never a good idea to go with the gas and restaurants credit card. Let's take a look at which credit card is best if you're just looking to churn these credit cards, get as many dollars as you can in that year one, and then ditch the card after that. After putting a one in the first year only box in that user profile section, you can see it really didn't change anything. All these credit cards have the exact same sign up bonus. You just get a match of your first year points. So if the card did better before, it's also going to do better when you're churning it. However, you're about to see in a second, there is always a better credit card than these discover credit cards. Let's get into it. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you're finding this valuable, please smash the like button down below. My first goal is to help you make more money and save more money. My second goal is to monetize this channel in the first year. Thanks for the support. I've made another tab here on my spreadsheet where I can compare the three Discover cards to three other cards that I think are similar. The first one I want to look at is the Flex Spending Credit Card from Discover, and I want to compare it to the Chase Freedom Flex. Right away, you can clearly see the Freedom Flex is better just by looking at the points per dollar spent. You get three additional categories on top of the Flex category, three points per dollar spent on drugstores and dining, five points per dollar spent on Chase Travel. The Freedom Flex is going to outpace the Discover's points in the points per dollar spent category. It also has a $0 annual fee and the sign up bonus is $200. Now this is where the Discover might be able to top the Chase Freedom Flex because if you spend a ton of money with the Discover Flex cashback card, you might be able to get a higher sign up bonus than $200. But the results don't lie. Let's look at the results page. And surprise, surprise, the Chase Freedom Flex dominates the Discover Flex in every spending level. Every dollar you spend, the Chase Freedom Flex gets further and further ahead, absolutely crushing the Discover Flex spending card. But let's see how it compares when we're doing churning only. And wow, that is actually very surprising. When you look at the year one only, the cashback credit card and the Freedom Flex are right in line with each other, but the Freedom Flex stays on top all the way because you get additional points per dollar spent on those other categories. You would always pick the Chase Freedom Flex over the Discover Flex cashback card. The next card I want to show you how to beat is the Discover Discover travel card. I want to compare it to the X1 credit card from Robinhood. They both give you just a flat points per dollar spent. There's no categories at all. The X1 gives you two points per dollar spent on all spending compared to the Discover travel giving you 1.5 miles per dollar spent. But the X1 gets an additional boost once you spend more than $1,000 in a month. All additional spending gets you an extra point per dollar spent. Let's go to the results page though and see how it looks graphically. And so Surprise, surprise, the X1 starts out on top at $10,000. And as you spend more and more, it gets further and further ahead. But let's see if the story changes when we look at the signup bonuses. If I'm looking to churn the X1, it doesn't get a signup bonus. So maybe the Discover can outpace it once you factor in that point match. Let's see. That is surprising. I would not have guessed this. These two cars are actually giving you points per dollars at the exact same rate. After adding in that signup bonus, the Discover travel card is is actually able to keep up and it's just ahead of that X1 credit card. So if you're looking for only year one, Discover actually takes it over the X1, but every year after that, the X1 is going to be on top by a mile. Final card I want to show you how to beat is the Discover Gas and Restaurants credit card. I want to compare it to the Wells Fargo autograph card. The autograph card similarly gets you points back for gas and restaurants. It has no annual fee and it has a sign up bonus of $300. Where it starts to take the lead is on the additional spending categories. You get three points per dollar spent on travel, restaurants, transit, phone bill, 
streaming, and gas. I don't know about you, but I would bet that this card is gonna outpace the Discover gas and restaurant credit card by quite a bit from these extra categories. Let's see. No surprise here, the autograph card is on top at $10,000 and the gap just widens all the way to $58,000. This one's a no-brainer. Definitely go with the autograph over the gas and restaurants card from Discover. But once again, we gotta check, does the year one sign-up bonus make a difference? Will the gas and restaurant card be able to overtake the autograph from the flat match on all points gained in that first year. The autograph card is on top until you hit $48,000 spent. At that point, the Discover does take the lead. It's pretty clear. Discover credit cards are not the best in most situations, but you can only know for sure if you do the math. If you'd like to use my spreadsheet to do your own analysis using your own budget to see which credit card is best for you, you can find a link in the description below for free. Or if you do not share my love for spreadsheets, you can check out the other videos in my credit card comparison playlist where I go over some of the more premium credit card bonuses like Chase and American Express. You've already got a taste of these, but you have not seen the best ones yet. Till next time.